Okay, if, we can, if I can ask the um, other two speakers to come back up and have a seat. Uh, I, think, I see we've got roaming microphones, so we've got five minutes before, before uh, replenishing caffeine levels, etc., and networking, and I'd like to open the questions out to the audience whilst the speakers are sitting down. And uh, as we've heard, we understand a little bit about the immunology, um, and the questions really that come are, we still don't know, one, how to, when we, you present what your course of disease is going to be like, how severe or mild it is, how to predict how we're going to, what treatment targets we should be given, and how we monitor outcomes. So you can see that we're here and we require your help. So I'd hope the questions will be hard and focused uh, to get us to think about how we should move forward. So fire away, please, thanks. Uh, I have a question, please. Uh, regarding the autoimmune, I've been for two years on the cocktail of um, Salcept and Cyclosporin. Quiet now for 17 months. Um, was informed before going on medication to go with the Redisert implant, which I opted no because I would have preferred systemic. My doctor felt systemic causes many side effects, which for eight months, my quality of life was nil. Uh, but I still thought right now, I'm feeling much better. Um, I was told after two years of being quiet, I can start being weaned off. This is really a two point question. Number one, with the immune system, I can understand being put on systemic medication how it affects our immune system. What I'm not quite sure about is with an implant, how does the brain start affecting? I mean, how does it affect the immune system if you're getting an implant versus medication to suppress the immune system? Um, so that's question number one. And question number two is, do, is there any study of after being on it for two years and being weaned off, the percentage of the immune system staying suppressed enough for the flare-up not to come back? Um, is there a time frame? Has any study been done if you go with that route of, of taking the medication, how long it might take or, you know? the progress of it. Thank you very much. They're two great questions and I'm going to summarize that and, ha and then I'll target the, the panel. The first real question is what is the relevance of giving a local treatment that suppresses versus systemic treatment when we're talking about the disease being triggered by the systemic immune system but yet we're only protecting locally. So to answer that one, um, I'm going to uh, first of all ask Graham if he has a comment, then, then pass over to Miles. Yeah, I mean, the, the real benefits of dealing with the, uh, of putting an insert in, is that you control the local inflammation. Um, while the, the systemically the body may still be responding, um, you're controlling the influx of these cells into the eye where they're causing the problems. And therefore by keeping the cells out in the first place, it's not really that important what's happened systemically. You're keeping it out of the eye where they're causing the damage and damaging your vision. And therefore the balance between the two is that if you can use less of the drug systemically to control the inflammation in the eye, then that's beneficial as opposed to giving systemic treatment. Thanks, and, and if that was the case and true, and that is only, and I'll be naughty and say that's still only an assumption and a reasonable theory. Miles, what do you feel uh, really there for the balances? You, 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 you did enumerate that and articulate that in the sense that anything we give is a real balance. And we need your help to know how to balance that. So how do you feel we should balance the reticert, for example, um, component to the systemic treatment as an answer? Yeah, well, it's... Um 
I, I quite take the point here. Um, again, we, we slightly have to look at what the natural history of the disorder is, all right? And actually, there aren't really very many good studies on this. So you were quoting your physician suggesting that once you've been quiet for two years, perhaps tail off and see what happens. I think that's perfectly reasonable. Um, but you might well expect relapse, and different people do different things. I always come back to the adverse effects of systemic drugs, I'm afraid, um, because I see patients every day who are miserable, their quality of life is completely shot to pieces. And yes, okay, a local implant is only acting locally, as Graham said, to keep the inflammation out of the eye. But in certain patients, there is no doubt that this disease burns out with time. Okay, so something occurs that switches off your central immune response, your abnormal response, and we just don't know what that is at the moment. So I think if we can control things locally without giving patients bad adverse effects, then that's probably the line that we ought to go down. Now, it's quite interesting that uh, I and others here in the audience took part in the original Retisert trials, and some of the, my Birdshot patients were actually involved in that trial, and I can think of two or three patients who had the Retisert implant and have never needed anything since. So, despite the implant only being said to work for three years, at the three-year, four-year, five-year, they were still disease-free. So I don't know if that's telling us something about the natural history of the disease, but it's certainly been extremely useful for those patients. Thanks very much, Miles. And to take the second question, um, uh, Nigel, I was going to ask you, you know, the, the question here is, and taking on f from Miles, is how do we predict what the course of a patient's disease will be? And the question really is three-pointed. One is, what am I, what's my cause going to be like? And when I'm on a drug, how do you know I'm actually in remission? Which means the disease has gone away on the drug to safely remove, to remove the treatment. And that may help us outside the what is otherwise just an empirical treat for two years and tail off, which I think most people agree with. But what do you think we should be doing or moving towards um, in able to help the question, which is really you know, how do we gauge a course, uh, the disease course, and how do we gauge when to stop treatment? Uh, I, I think it's very difficult. I was asking myself the same question just the other day in conversation with a, with a patient. Um, it's, it's an observation, and I don't know if it's one that others would back up, that um, it is useful to, um, to, to get the diagnosis, capture the diagnosis, early and begin treatment early where you can see there is active inflammation. It's, it's my impression that if, if we're able to do that, then you can avoid a lot of the, the, the sight-threatening complications. And I, I don't know, it would be pure speculation to say whether that would lead to um, a better long-term benefit. Um, do others feel the same sort of thing? Well, I, I think the issue is, is absolutely we don't know. Um, you, could, you, could, uh, you could extrapolate from other autoimmune diseases that the increasing data from things like rheumatoid arthritis, that if you treat early, you modulate the disease course. What we don't have, like rheumatoid arthritis has, is biomarkers, which are tests we can test the blood system for, for immune health. Um, so we know when it's dysregulated, and therefore we know potentially what the progression of your disease might be like. Um, and that's the difficulty. But we are in a positively good place. The increasing technology is allowing us to do that scientifically. And the increasing technology of image-based image modalities allows us to get an, a much more insight into the tissue base, i.e. your retina and choroid, as to know how that is responding as well. And when you put that and, and conflate it, and compile it, then, then hopefully we get better uh, measures of outcome and prediction. But um, you yeah, want to I say was, I was just going to uh, reiterate what um, Andrew's just said. I think that we have now got various targets that we can look at genetically. Um, having something like uh, the Budshot Society being set up and all the people here getting your stories and your information. So we can put those together and identify which genetic profile, for instance, is going to have a patient who's going to have a mild disease course compared to some of those with the much more severe that Miles was talking about. And I think we're, we are in a good place to do that now 
and this sort of uh, day is going to help us very much to do that. Okay, I, I'm gonna. I've been given. You know what it's like when you're on the TV and you've got an earpiece in, and someone's saying, "Cut, cut, cut." Get you know, um, get them off or whatever it is. I'm really sorry, but the time is of an essence to have much fun today. I've noticed that there's massive networking abilities. Everyone is going to be around, and and. I would hope that you just grab us and ask questions during the day. So I'm really sorry to cut it short. I can see all the hands going up, but thank you very much for, for, uh, for f being forbearing in, a, in the last session. Thank you.